From the beginning, man has possessed the attributes of the animal. Speed, power, dynamic movement, the instinct to exploit the weakness of his prey. And from his human inventiveness came weapons that could puncture and slash his enemy's flesh. In his struggle to survive, he developed tactics to heighten his advantage. Gradually, man created a knife culture, which has changed very little as it has cut its way through time. fluid in movement, still slashing and stabbing its enemies, the knife culture is still alive and deadly. What's happening, man? Now that's it. Uh, you got the money, man? Let me see the shit, man. The shit's there, man. Where's the money? Five minutes. Five minutes, baby. Oh, man, no money, no shit. Oh, man, five minutes. Oh, fuck you, man. <laughs> The first step is to become aware that edged weapon attacks often occur in unlikely situations, often when you're distracted or not expecting them at all. Police department. Thorny? Jim Thorny? Thorny, I got a warrant for you. I know you're in there. Come on to the door. Open up. Ah! Where are you guys? What's going on? The use of the unexpected is a favorite tactic of edged weapon offenders. Told you three times to stop by on the customer. This time you're going to jail. Why don't you leave me alone, man? Why don't you back off? No, this time you're going to jail. You're too close. Some survivors have found this out the hard way. Unlike the Hollywood depiction of the single telegraphed strike, most edged weapon attacks against police are much less predictable and involve subjects whose behavior may not be so obvious. You are safest to treat any call as having some potential for an edged weapon attack but realize that certain situations tend to carry great risk. For example, in making a traffic stop, 
A lack of caution in contacting the driver may bring you within range of common cutting weapons. Hi there. Say, do you have a driver's license? You just roll through that stop sign back there. And your partner may not even be in a position initially to help you or even see any threat. Is there somewhere? No problem. Something with your photo, name on it, that'll be fine. Do you consider that a violator may have rigged up a scabbard in the armrest, allowing him to quickly arm himself, or that he may reach toward you with a driver's license that he's altered with a razor blade taped to the back? Even a common item, like an ice scraper, given the right offender and motivation, can suddenly become an edged weapon you may not be expecting. Keep them out. Nice and cool. Moving in for an arrest, you're necessarily oh. close. Be nice. Hey, come on, stand up, okay? Come on, stand up. Without good tactics, you make yourself vulnerable to an incredible array of edged weapons. Just a sampling of what's available is indicated by these knives recovered by courtroom officers. And these weapons taken from a search of students at a public school. Of course you're aware of the ballet song, or butterfly knife, whose folding handle aids in concealment. And you've probably seen a knife that looks like a ballpoint pen. But are you familiar with the Mexican sacatripe, used for gutting sheep and other warm-blooded animals? Or the butane lighter holder that conceals a push knife in back? Or the bracelet that pulls open into a knife? This commercially available rig gives an offender ready access to throwing darts hidden up his sleeve. This kind of money clip has more of a point to it than just holding cash. And a carrier like this, easily hidden under a shirt, can quickly arm a suspect with this wicked weapon. Tonto knives, among the deadliest fighting knives, have incredible penetration capability because of their special blade configuration. Plus, they can be used to crush a human skull. The ballistic knife can either be used for conventional slashes or stabs, or fired with deadly results by a powerful spring in the handle. There's also hidden danger in this lipstick tube, popular with prostitutes. Also sold on the open market is this key that opens into a knife, and this bear claw necklace. Adding to the threat are a host of improvised weapons, sunglasses that can be flicked to poke out your eyes, fish hooks hidden in earrings or stuck through pant legs to rip your fingers on a pat-down, boots with protruding spikes, a baseball cap with razor blades sewn to the back, which can be swung by the bill to cut your face, even something like this mace made by a teenager with lead and spikes in his workshop. Yet it's easy to forget the possibility of being confronted by one of these, isn't it? Have you ever... Oh, yeah, little man. Come on. Sometimes on, poor tactics give an unarmed offender access to an officer's duty knife. Do your escort procedures make sure it stays secure? <laughs> okay, let's go to the car. <laughs> All right. Hey! Come on. Hey, little pinky. One circumstance where you can anticipate edged weapons is the disturbance call. In fact, more officers are knifed during disturbance calls than in all other situations combined. Police! Police department! Hey, what's going on here? Do you watch all the people who may be at the scene? Do you stay aware of everything around you that could be a weapon?
Officers who fall victim to edged weapons usually commit at least one critical error, like misreading what could be a weapon or misjudging the subject. Let's try it again this time. Why don't you leave the pens in the tray before you come through? Sure. Sometimes it's the unlikely individual who has the best chance of harming you. Tragically, it's been estimated that one out of every four edged weapon attacks could be prevented if updated intelligence information were known. Squad 21 to the dispatcher. Squad 21, go ahead. 10 7 with a violator. 41 southbound. It's a silver 78 Chevy two door. California plates. King. Ida, Lincoln, Mary, Edward. Uh, one white male occupant. Task Force Squad 21. In most situations, your threat assessment will have to begin by you identifying the suspect's potential for violence. Most civilians would never threaten you with an edged weapon. Even those who carry concealed knives generally do so to protect themselves against criminals. Squad 21. Squad 21, go ahead. Squad 21, be advised there's a possible local open warrant for DWI on that subject. The flight list to a Ron Thomas of Los Angeles. The warrant is on that subject. 10-4. But some will turn against you, if frightened or if provoked. Many civilians do live on the fringe of the knife culture. They're influenced by movies that glorify the blade. Heroes who build confidence in fighting back against the bad guy. Shut your engine off! What the fuck do you want? I want to see your driver's license. What for? Christ, I'm only a black from home. Why don't you let me go? Look, I just want to see your driver's license. Oh, Christ. I got it here somewhere. It's in the car. I'll get it. Most people have drawn inner boundaries they don't want crossed. And sometimes, the blade is there to guard those boundaries. Here's my license. Why don't you come and get it? Adding to this country's heritage of edged weapons, as well as a growing knife culture in Canada, are new waves of immigrants from knife culture countries. In the Middle East, Mexico, South America, and Asia, it is not only common to carry edged weapons, it's common to use them. Besides violence launched at each other and civilian victims, there is the potential for these people to mistakenly associate you with police in their homeland. Often they're accustomed to police states where death squads and police torture are common. Also included in today's knife culture are emotionally disturbed persons, or EDPs. Included here are thousands of the homeless, an estimated one-third of whom are armed with edged weapons. Typically unskilled with weapons, but still dangerous, EDPs can quickly become the ultimate knife-wielding psycho. The edged weapon can hold a special power for them. It's part of their violent fantasies. PDPs are often portrayed by the media as poor, harmless, crazy people. Squad 421. 421, go ahead. 421, meet security. Trouble with a patient identified as Ted Zimowitz. Room 41 of the Mental Health Center, 9500 West Wisconsin. Approach with caution, subject possibly armed with an edged weapon. 421 is 10 4. It's a hell of a way to start off a shift. But remember, EDPs have killed more officers with edged weapons than any other category of offender. To be especially feared are EDPs who do have edged weapon skills through military experience or learned while incarcerated. There are over 25,000 EDPs inside jails and prisons. 
And they're more dangerous when they're let out than before incarceration. Because of a paranoid fear of intrusion, your very presence may be experienced as an overwhelming threat. To him, the weapons he covets may be powerful crutches, and he knows you want to remove them to diminish him. Hey! My toilet don't work! Hey! My toilet don't work! My out there, go fix my toilet! Hold on a minute, Terry. Let me take care of this guy over here. Hey! Wyatt! Sir, I need you to come out of your cell. We have to move you down about two doors down. You need to come out now. Sir, can you hear me? Are you okay? Sir, we can do this either the easy way or the hard way. It's up to you. Whatever you want to do. <laughs> Sir, I want you to come out and I want to see your hands now. Okay, man. Okay. Don't fuck with me. Outside prison, there are those with martial arts training who prefer the edged instrument over other weapons because of its silence. It never jams, never has to be reloaded, and it doesn't leave a ballistic residue. Plus, they understand that even for violent crimes, our liberal courts tend to be more lenient with knife offenders than with criminals who use guns. Unfortunately, a suspect's type may not always be obvious to you as a warning sign. Especially when nothing seems out of the ordinary. And when low light level or fast action make it difficult to see his weapon. These problems, of course, are multiplied when an edged weapon offender has backup. To overcome these suspect advantages, it is crucial that you read danger cues in behavior and body language. Hey, you're blocking the alley. What's the problem? Certain movements leave little doubt about intent. Ah! This represents imminent danger for sure. But many officers who become knife victims are so startled by a sudden charge that they freeze up. Sometimes you see an offender move to throw an edged weapon. The truth is, very few people can throw accurately, especially in the real world, where targets move. Also, a trained knife fighter will rarely throw away his weapon. Unless he has more that you can't see. A third type of behavior usually occurs as a defensive reaction by an offender. The taunting gesture. Get away from here. Get out of my house. Drop the razor. Drop it. Stop. And what he's telling you is, don't invade my space or I'll attack you. Show me your hands. Now. One of the most dangerous forms of concealment is palming. This hides the edged weapon while still positioning it for immediate use. If you can't see a suspect's palms or the straightened tips of all of his fingers and thumbs, that's a danger cue. Another clue to assessing threat potential is how the subject is holding the edged weapon once it becomes visible. A knife held point first with a loose grip may telegraph an attempt at an underhand or slinging throw. The saber hold is for throwing overhand and is generally even less effective. But it is more powerful and may cause injury even though the knife doesn't stick. The ice pick or Hollywood grip is how many officers envision being attacked. Either a novice or an expert can use it effectively. <laughs> The 
ice pick grip is hard to defend against and can even be delivered like this. The underhand grip lets an attacker slash as well as stab. He can hold the weapon in the hand furthest from you to protect it from disabling strikes. Then his forward hand can block or grab your arm to clear the way to the target. Another popular position is the diagonal underhand grip, which shows even more skill because the knife's edge can be rotated to cut in backhand as well as forehand movements. Many targets are vulnerable to this technique. From the femoral artery in the groin to the arms, ribs, chest, the neck, and back. A very skilled knife fighter might use the reverse ice pick grip. Here the cutting edge is held to the outside for an effective forehand slash, which is followed by backhand stabs. The crucial tactic for your buying time to assess a suspect and to protect yourself against an edged weapon you don't immediately see is this. Control distance. Many officers, like the one on the left, really believe if they're close to the action, they're in control. But this attitude disregards the proxemics of the situation. That's the relationship between distance and the threat level produced by the weapon present. A common problem, whether there's one officer involved or the whole shift. What about officers responding on the street below this offender? Are they too close to his gun threat? They're ignoring the concept of the reactionary gap, the distance you need from a potential threat to defend yourself if an attack is launched. For firearms assaults, a reactionary gap can be a half a mile or more if good cover isn't available. To defend yourself against assaults from hands and feet, you need a reactionary gap of about 10 feet. Most officers think that's good enough for edged weapons too. But this unrehearsed training exercise shows just how fast a knife offender can shrink your reactionary gap. Here, officers have been told to investigate suspicious circumstances at night in a warehouse and react to what they find. At first glance, this officer's distance from the suspect looks safe enough. But an attacker can easily cover this distance faster than most officers can draw their guns. Remember, when you close the distance between yourself and the suspect, do so only by purposeful decision. In fact, at close distances, your only realistic option for controlling a suspect is empty hand tactics. Yet when officers are asked how they would control a knife attacker, they usually say, I'd shoot him, forgetting that they may not have time to in reality. Here, still unrehearsed, is what really happens when officers assume they can automatically use deadly force against a knifer. They stand their ground and try to draw or try to draw and disengage simultaneously, or even worse, try to draw, fall down, and shoot. And they lose, because time and distance work for the offender and against the officer. With a reactionary gap of about one foot or less, it's impossible for you to react quickly enough to even touch your holstered sidearm once the attack begins. At about five feet, the average officer can't even get his sidearm unholstered. Unless your sidearm or baton is already out, you'll have to rely on physical control at five feet or less. At about ten feet, you might get your sidearm out, but you probably won't get a shot off. A suspect with a knife can close seven paces and deliver deadly force in less than one and one half seconds. For the average officer to deliver two rounds against an attacker who starts moving at 10 feet, the sidearm must already be drawn and ready to shoot. At about 15 feet, your chances get a little better if you're alert, anticipate danger, and are skilled with your equipment. 
but to deliver two rounds center of mass, your hand would already have to be on your sidearm when the attack begins. Tests with hundreds of officers reveal that in most cases, a minimum reactionary gap of 21 feet is required to react and deliver at least two rounds and to have enough time to move out of the attacker's path. And in certain other situations, you'll need more distance. Spring-loaded knives, like the ballistic knife, require a reactionary gap of about 40 feet Blowguns have been known to be accurate at 70 feet. What's the problem? There is no problem here. Well, you can go. Nobody called. Let me see your hands. Hey, just, just go. There's nothing wrong here. Let me see your hands and step from the porch. With this, an offender can control at least 150 feet. Go find the dispatch. The rule remains, distance is your best defense unless adequate cover is available. Once you see the attacker, create a reactionary gap by enforcing voice commands or by using the unexpected, or consider full-scale disengagement. If he's charging and you're on foot, sidestepping unexpectedly will force him to slow down. When you can control the reactionary gap, you create time by creating distance. Time to compute your force options and time to communicate with the potential attacker. Here's my license. Why don't you come get it? Drop the knife. Fuck you. I said, drop the knife. Oh, OK, I'm just kidding. Sorry. Now back away. Turn away from me. When you can communicate, try to deliver your commands from behind cover and listen for cues to the suspect's psychology. Officer, he's the one that stole the meat. Hold it. Get away from the truck. What do you got under your coat? Some meat, man. Put the meat on the truck. Step away from the truck towards me. I want to need some identification. Here's your ID right here. 835, give me a backup, man, with a knife blackmail. Tate's food, 27 to National. Throw down the knife. Hey, man, I ain't throwing this knife down. This is special to me, man. Throw down the knife. Nah, nah, this knife cost me a bunch of money, man. 350 bucks. It's a Vietnam commemorative knife. All right, then just place the knife down slowly. It won't get scratched. Slowly place the knife down. All right, I'll do that. I'll mess up my knife, though. Step away from the knife towards the auto. Now turn around with your arms extended up. Bend over and extend them back. Stay like that and don't move. Driver, exit your vehicle with your keys and step to the front of my squad car. Do it now. Sometimes you can use a barrier as a precaution when communicating, even though no edged weapon is visible. On a vehicle stop, where your assessment tells you not to approach, you can position the violator so your patrol car will hamper an attack. Do you have a driver's license? Can I see it, please? You can still see his vehicle and maintain good balance truck? while he stretches across with the license. No, I'm from out of town. I'm just here visiting. Your partner can monitor the passenger side. And don't touch me. I'm so sick of your shit. Anytime an edged weapon is visible, take advantage of your immediate surroundings. Walls, pillars, or other obstacles that can strengthen your reactionary gap. Lady, lady, drop the knife. I'm not dropping. Drop it right now. I said to drop it. If you have a problem, we'll talk about it. I want you to move over that way. All right, put that knife Go down. Ahead, if you have a problem, we will talk about it. Put the knife down now. This man threatened to kill his wife, himself, and officers if they came near. Using the porch railing as a barrier, officers safely talked him into giving up. This man was peeved about the serving of a warrant. He started throwing shards of glass. The officer avoided injury by simply moving under the canopy, while other officers covered at a distance. Squad 762 to 762W. Be advised, I'm in position across from Paul Zuller on the northwest corner. 762W, 10-4. I'm set up in the southeast corner. When moving in for an arrest, be tactical in closing your reactionary gap. 
Remember that in half of all officer fatalities, the death weapon was concealed prior to assault. Police officer, don't move! A sharp offender is going to be watching and waiting for you to make a tactical error. Whatever your arrest technique, assume that any suspect could have weapons and try to use them at any time. I want you to turn around real slowly. Start turning. Set him up for handcuffing that's free of palmed weapons. Keep going. Keep turning. Stop. Now put your left hand on the top of your head with the palm up. Put your right hand back. Bring it back. Thumb down. Keep it coming. Now I want you to start walking backwards towards me real slowly. Thorough searching after handcuffing is crucial. Develop a consistent pattern that you follow each time to assure that all areas accessible to the suspect are checked. Stop. Every time. Don't move. While you're handcuffing, keep his hands lifted away from his waist and maintain control of them while you search. Back up nice and easy. Remove any hat and visually inspect his hair without touching it. Then start at the collar and move down. You want to touch lightly, then pinch and crimp clothing to best prevent being punctured or cut by sharp objects. I got a knife. If you do find something, acknowledge it to be sure your partner is aware that the danger level has just gone up. Remember, edged weapons can be hidden in seams as well as pockets. Pull down any jacket to help restrain his arms. Then recheck his upper body to search his inner clothing. Undo his belt to make searching his waistband easier and check the belt and buckle for concealed weapons. Because some suspects may booby trap their clothing with fish hooks or razor blades, look before you touch. And consider running a mini baton or pen over hard to see areas first. When checking a limb, be sure you search all surfaces and push up clothing when possible to see what may be strapped to the body. Is that another knife? Before transport, consider the option of removing and searching suspect shoes, especially boots and socks. Edged weapons are sometimes hidden even in secret compartments under the sole or in the heel. Wallets and purses can easily conceal edged weapons as well. If you find one weapon, keep searching. People who like edged weapons often like lots of them. This is a good point to remember when asking a subject for ID as well as when you're searching. What's the most dangerous weapon? The one you don't see. I got a blade here. All these hidden weapons were taken off a suspect in the booking area after he was searched on the street. Get out, little bitch. 
Biggie. Where are we going, man? As you escort the suspect, maintain physical control to defeat any hostile move. In the car. <laughs> well, no. Okay, As his resistance yeah, no. mounts, slip your hand behind his arm and bend his wrist. Straighten up. Hey, man, you got me. Big, big hand, yeah. <laughs> Hook his shoulder near the neck with your other hand to pull him toward you, off balance, and exert enough pressure on his wrists to bring him up on his toes. This procedure will minimize his chances of disarming you and escaping. Hey, go. Oh, yes, sir. I'm the manager. There's a woman getting raped in apartment 24 right now. This is a passkey. I don't want to get involved in it. There's a couple of doors on the right-hand side. Room 24? Yes, sir. Okay, we'll check it out. We'll let you know what happens. Thanks, sir. Police! Hello, police! Of course, you'll want to preclude or eliminate the possibility of using some lower level of force. You want to be certain of your target identification and try to achieve target isolation so no third parties are needlessly endangered. your firearm, remember this acronym, SMENS. You shoot to stop the attacker's threatening action. You move out of the attacker's path. You evaluate whether the attacker has been incapacitated. You neutralize the continuing threat if it has not been stopped. And finally, you scan the area for other threats. How many edged weapons do you see now? Assist, officer down, shots fired. 625 South 6. 10 4 Squad 44. All units, assist officers, shots fired. 625 South 6th Street. 
As part of your response, you also want to think CCRR. Take cover as soon as tactically feasible. Communicate with suspects. Communicate with other officers. Communicate with dispatch. Reload your weapon, ideally from behind cover. And recover or protect the weapon. It's important as evidence, and you don't want it to disappear or be accessible to hostile hands. Anytime blood's around, use rubber gloves to guard against infection. And touch the weapon where there's the least risk of destroying fingerprints. Today, most crime labs prefer that recovered edged weapons be transported in a box rather than a plastic bag for better preservation. I got a knife. If blood or fingerprints are not considerations, a knife in a sheath can be secured in your gun belt. A bare blade can be stuck between cartridge holders and your Sam Brown, leaving your hands free. 421 dispatch. 421. 421 ETA to the mental health center is approximately one minute. 10 4 421. 421 dispatch, we're 1023, mental health center. Although your gun is usually your best defense against an edged weapon, some circumstances may require other options. A baton is an alternative many officers have used successfully but understand its limitations with edged weapons. Okay. Put the glass down, Ted. Okay. Ted, can you hear me? Ted, put the glass down, Ted. Just put it down. All we want to do is talk to you. Just put the glass down. A baton down. works best when the attacker is not experienced with edged weapons when the action is moving slowly, when you're not imminently threatened, and when you have enough backup, including at least one cover officer, with gun ready. Ted, put the glass down. Get out of here. Ted, put the glass down, Ted. Take another step and you're dead. I, if I don't kill you, I'm going to kill myself. Come on. Come on. You too. Come on. You too. Come on. Come on. You too. Get the restraints! The baton is not a distractor. Use it to neutralize his delivery system. Please. Hit as hard as you can to cause a dysfunction of the extremity and force a release of the weapon. And quickly follow through with repeat strikes or physical control. Or get back and get your gun out. When you can't create or maintain distance, or you have no other choice, you may have to know effective unarmed defense as a last resort. But be aware of extensive misinformation on this subject. Hey, man, what are you doing here? Standing around. Why are you standing here and not on some street corner somewhere? Free country, man. I can stand where I want. Well, I don't like that. You can see what's in your hand over here. You got some idea or something, man? Yeah, I got something for well, you. Well, let me see. Ah! Sometimes trainers claim fist fighting works, but usually it doesn't, because it doesn't stabilize the weapon. Remember classic techniques like the X block? This just wastes time and gives him an easy target by keeping you in line with the motion of his weapon. Never use anything valuable as an obstacle.
tactics designed to defeat traditional physical control measures are widely available and taught to civilians. A basic concept for countering obstacles is simply to redirect the edged weapon and keep attacking from another angle. Most unarmed defenses require that you be standing up to be successful. In reality, you may be running, already down on the ground or getting out of your patrol car. Unless your moves allow you to immediately control or defeat the blade from any position, you'll continue to be vulnerable to tactics like multiple strikes. A more effective technique when you're moving and behind the suspect is a rapid takedown without letting him stop and turn. Here, the officer grabs the suspect's wrist and elbow in an escort grip. Then the suspect is stunned against the ground with a forceful arm bar. Throw the knife away! Throw it out! Put your hands out to your side! Even though the officer was not initially aware of the knife threat, good physical tactics kept him safe. Let me see your hands. Knife! Drop the knife! One tactical option for close-up self-defense is to forcefully sweep and shove the attacker's knife arm away to deflect his attack. Then quickly move forward to expand your reactionary gap. This is called sweep and disengage. Sir, I'm stopping you for a speeding violation. I need to see your driver's license. Do you have one with you? Drop! Oh, no! Sir, don't move. Put your hands. Don't move. Put your hands out to the side. Put them out to the side. Put your palms up. Don't move. Stay right there. If sweep and disengage is not possible, you want to employ the principle of gun. You grab his knife hand with both your hands, high up to immobilize his hand so he can't rotate his weapon. Grabbing properly is critical. Using two hands doesn't mean like this. And grabbing the arm instead of high up on the wrist and hand leaves the offender too much freedom of movement. Next, you undo the weapon from his grasp, which may require multiple knee strikes or some other technique to weaken his control. Knee strikes are repeated, all-out power drives to his abdomen, not his groin, accompanied by verbal commands. Finally, you neutralize his desire to resume the attack by creating distance and getting prepared in case deadly force becomes necessary. Remember, empty hand control should be a last resort. Often you can avoid this completely by improving your approach tactics like ordering this offender away from his bike before you walk up. In some cases, two officers can apply the gun principle. One secures the offender's wrist and hand. The other delivers multiple blows to his forearm to create dysfunction. If you press your thumb into the mound on top of your forearm, you'll find a nerve center that causes weakness in your hand. That's ideally the spot you want to hit on the suspect. <laughs> Look at a live one. Hello, ladies. Hi there. Hello. Uh, I got some spare change. Did you get some spare time? Is that it? Spare change. Oh, what do you think this it. is, huh? Well, we don't take any spare uh -oh. change. What's what do you name? Well, let's see what you hey, got. Hey, pal. Rod. Rod. Hey, buddy. Rod. 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 Why don't you hit the road? Move down the street. Hit the road. Move down the street. Down the street. Move it. Move it. Right. I told you, girls, I didn't want you working my street. And I told you to get the fuck out of here. A variation of the gun principle is possible when you can stun the assailant's hand against a solid surface. Oh. Left hand behind your head. Oh, okay, you hurt me, you asshole. You're under arrest. Oh, so are you. Left hand behind your back. Okay. At any time during an edged weapon assault, accept the fact that you may get cut. You will bleed and feel pain. But if you're prepared for this injury, you can surprise your enemy by not losing your cool when he expects you to do so. Remember that knife wounds don't produce the extreme hydrostatic shock of bullet wounds. Unless the edged weapon has pierced a vital organ, 
it's quite possible to remain functional. A lot of blood doesn't necessarily mean a lot of serious injury. Once the suspect has fled or is neutralized, visually inspect yourself. You may have wounds you don't feel. Control bleeding by using direct, constant pressure over the wound. Use your palm or other available object. This will help stop the flow of blood to permit clotting. Consciously, make your breathing slow, deep, and rhythmic. This will lessen your adrenaline rush, slow down your rate of bleeding, and delay the onset of shock. 6-3 dispatcher. When a leg or arm is injured, raise the limb so gravity helps reduce blood pressure at the wound site. Maintain control over the suspect and keep direct pressure on your injury until help arrives. Unit 653 to dispatcher. With a chest wound, protect your airway. Tilt your head back slightly and keep your chin up to hyperextend your neck. This will keep your airway open if you lose consciousness. If a lung has been punctured, there's risk of it collapsing unless the wound is sealed. Tightly press your hand or a piece of airtight material directly over the wound. In this case, the officer removed plastic from inside his hat. A credit card can also work. You want to exhale, then cover the wound next to the skin if possible. Try to breathe normally and get help. In this situation, the weapon itself may provide sufficient direct pressure to restrict the flow of blood. Don't remove it. Hold it in place. You guys have any idea as to where the officers are at? I don't know. This is the location they gave us. Well, why don't you check with your dispatcher and make sure this is the correct address? And then why don't you check, continue in this way for me? I'll cross the street and check behind you. Sounds good. Okay. When you do call for assistance, be specific about your exact location and injuries. Lying on a stomach wound lets the weight of your body apply pressure while your hands stay free to control the suspect and update communications. 20 hour. I'm up on the upper deck, East National, by the tracks. 10 4 20 hour. Ambulance has been sent. All units responding to 20 hour's location be advised he is on the upper level near the commuter tracks. Go for it. I'm going to blow your brains out. As you continue your deep breathing, commit yourself right now. I will survive. In my mind, I'm never going to die in no ghetto. Absolutely never. If a man turns around and punches me in the head, the fight's on. If he cuts me, the fight's on. If I'm shot, the fight is on. I'm not losing no fight to no scumbag out there in no ghetto, period. That's it. No son of a bitch out there is going to get me. The only way he gets me is cut my head off, and I mean that. I'll fight you till I got a breath left in me. I don't think any of those animals in that street can beat me. And I've gone that way for 18 years of street service, street duty, and that's the way I'm gonna keep on going. You don't lose the fight.